This is the narrow gauge railway connecting the villages of Antonovka and Zorechnoye in central Ukraine. It is 106 kilometers long, one of the longest in Europe. Working in a field or a wood drying plant, people here have never lived the wealthy, carefree life of a modern western city dweller. And then the war came to their country. In the city of Konotop, in the summer of 1949, 3,000 residents built the city's first four-kilometer-long tram line without any design documentation or government oversight. All they had were bits and pieces of railroad tracks and slag from the boiler house to use as ballast. Since the Second World War, the city has not had the chance to evolve into a shiny, roaring metropolis and could not even afford to pave all its residential streets. And then another war came. This is Arsenalna station, part of the Kiev metro. It is the deepest transit station in the world. At 105.5 meters underground, it takes more than five minutes just to take the escalator to the bottom. After the Cold War ended, it became a running joke to refer to Soviet-era metro stations as nuclear bomb shelters. No one thought that one day it would stop being funny. The capital of Ukraine is currently being attacked with air raids. This is the children's railway in the city of Kharkiv. Here, children from 6 to 16 years old work as station attendants, traffic dispatchers, and even train drivers, learning teamwork and responsibility. Some of the small children in this fairly old video you're seeing are likely having to defend their homeland today with weapons in hand. The Russian city of Belgorod is just 18 kilometers away. Belgorod and Kharkiv have always been twin cities. No one could ever think this proximity would be used one day to launch missile attacks. This is a typical commuter train of the Ukrainian railway. Not very fancy, not very comfortable. It nevertheless loyally delivered millions of peaceful Ukrainians to their jobs each day. One such train goes to the Simakhodi station near the infamous town of Pripyat. Though the Chernobyl power plant is now closed, its maintenance workers still use the station to reach their workplace in order to perform security repairs in the undoubtedly most dangerous place on our planet. The Chernobyl power plant was captured by the Russian army just a week ago, although it seems like a month has passed. The world was terrified, but has quickly forgotten as the horror escalates to a previously unseen degree. This man is an actor and producer, known for his comedy films. He won the Ukrainian presidential elections in the middle of 2019 and failed to implement any meaningful reforms before COVID crisis came. According to recent polls, his approval rating fell below 30%, but today he is an absolute national hero. When a neighbor 30 times larger launched air raid attacks against his country's peaceful cities without any declaration of war, he was offered the chance to flee, but did not. He did not surrender. He proudly stayed at the capital's central square and said, We will fight back. The Ukrainian nation is now united like it has never been united before, and it is successfully defeating the aggressor that claimed to be the most powerful army in the world. They call this man a bunker rat. For the last two years, he has hidden himself in his luxurious bunkers and is rarely seen outside of them. He does not let anybody within the distance of a pistol shot of him and deliriously smiles when he talks about the entire world dying in an atomic explosion. For more than 20 years, he concentrated absolute power in his hands and then ordered his troops to aggressively attack a dear and beloved neighboring country. Many tried to stop him. This man spotted Putin's insanity from the very beginning. He was killed right at the walls of the Kremlin. This man created a sprawling organization that fought Putin and his corruption before he was poisoned with a chemical weapon and jailed. The people of Russia have been protesting this act of war despite being brutally beaten by police and being sentenced to severe prison terms. All the while, Western politicians continue to be friends with Putin's oligarchs, finance their businesses, kept their blood money, and let their yachts into their ports. 
No one had thought to seize all the mansions and villas purchased with money stolen from the Russian people because it was private property. Now they have finally woken up, but it is too late.